Hi, my name is Kent Sanders. I'm the Professor of Worship at St. Louis Christian College in Florissant, Missouri. And I'm going to do a series of Evernote tutorials on some basics of how to use the program. Evernote is a great program. I'm a huge advocate of it, and I use it for my professional life as well as personal life. And whether you are someone who already uses it, or someone who is thinking about using it, or even if you're a novice, and you know a few things but you want to learn a few things hopefully you may learn some things from these tutorials in the first tutorial we're going to talk about some Evernote basics in the second one we will talk about how to get your information and how to get your stuff into Evernote and in the third tutorial we'll talk about how to search in Evernote and that's that's really a huge and awesome feature of Evernote is how the search works so let's dig in here first of all what is Evernote? Evernote is um, it's an app and a desktop application and a website kind of all rolled into one like many things are these days there's an Evernote app available for uh, mobile devices I personally use it on my iPhone and my iPad and I have the desktop version on my laptop and this computer that I'm using here my home desktop also you can log into evernote.com into your account and you can see all your stuff there so the beauty of Evernote is that you can dump any kinds of information into it any kinds of files basically and then you can access that pretty much anywhere you can get online and so it's a great uh, great program let me highlight something here before we dig into Evernote and that is the difference between there's my son and our puppy who was a really bad puppy and we no longer have her so She's with another family now, but I digress. Let me talk for a second about the difference between Evernote and Dropbox. Uh, I've spoken with a lot of people about Evernote, uh, my students, colleagues, friends, and um, love to show people how it's benefited me and why they should check it out. And one question that people have a lot is, how is Evernote different than Dropbox? And here's the way I look at it. Evernote is more, more functions as a kind of like a digital brain where you can put all your stuff and you can access it very easily but Evernote is not really primarily about collaborating with other people you can share notebooks and I'll talk about that in a few moments and that's very easy to do and people can access your stuff in Evernote and you can share folders with others and things like that but it's not really primarily about collaboration Evernote mostly is about putting your stuff in Evernote and you being able to access it in a variety of ways but also getting your stuff into Evernote in a variety of ways. So it's very functional in that aspect. However, Dropbox, even though I, I use Dropbox a lot and love it, uh, I use it along with Evernote, Dropbox is really set up in more of a traditional file folder system. So obviously you have, you can see here, I've got several file folders. And Evernote is, I'm uh, sorry, Dropbox is fantastic at collaborating with others. So you can set up a Dropbox account and other people can access it if you want them to. And you can share documents and files and whatnot. For instance, here I have a folder called Chapel. And this is where we uh, put, put items related to Chapel at our school. Spring 2000 Audio is where we put our Chapel messages that we record. These are edited files right here. And those, that's where I dump the edited files after I edit them. So what happens is we record a message in Chapel, we make a raw MP3 out of it, we dump it into Evernote, and then I can go back and I can access that file anywhere else because I have that Dropbox account on those computers linked with my own Dropbox account, if that makes sense. So this one, after these three folders, indicates that I'm sharing this folder with someone else. In this case, the ch our Chapel computer setup. These other files are uh, these are unique to me and my Dropbox account. For instance, I have uh, some folders for my courses that I teach at the school, a few of those courses. And I can access those on this desktop computer or my laptop or wherever. Um, this folder music is where I keep chord charts for our worship band and church and obviously a lot of chord charts there that I've accumulated over the years. And so that's really what Dropbox is for. That's a great program. I highly recommend it, but it's very different than Evernote, and you can't really compare the two items. So let's dive into Evernote here. First of all, you see the menu at the top, and these are pretty much self-explanatory. These are not difficult to understand. Sync button, which syncs your Evernote stuff 
with uh, the Evernote servers, which is uh, an important aspect of it. Uh, you can share items. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, usage button. Obviously, I haven't used very much space yet. I do want to mention that there are two ways you can use Evernote. Um, not two ways, but rather two types of accounts you can have. You can have a free account and you can have a paid account. The free account is wonderful. You get a lot of space available with that. But with the paid account, you get a space upgrade and I think some other items as well. And it's five bucks a month if you want to upgrade. I have upgraded because I can I can use this space because I'm continually dumping stuff into Evernote. Let me walk through here and show you a couple things before we get to the end of this tutorial. One is I want to talk about uh, the notebooks here and then I also want to talk about uh, this pane over here for just a second. Let me show you how I set up my notebooks on Evernote. Not everybody will do it this way, but this is how I do it and everybody can adapt it to their own needs. My philosophy with with notebooks on Evernote is kind of related to the Goldilocks principle is that you don't want to have too few and you don't want to have too many you want to have an amount that is just right for what you need and this is this is kind of a difficult thing if you're used to tons and tons of file folders and subfolders and subfolders underneath that on a typical computer setup this does not work that way in fact Evernote only lets you set up one layer two layers of folders you ha here I have the main folders and for instance underneath personal here I have subfolders and you can't create any folders within these subfolders and that's okay for two reasons. Number one is that Evernote has such a powerful search feature that you don't really need a whole bunch of subfolders. If you do it right, you can find things very quickly. But secondly is, uh, at least the way I approach it, is I want to have these things, these subfolders and these folders memorized so that whenever I need to send something to a specific file into Evernote, then I can do that and I know what those, what the names of those subfolders are. For instance, when I want to send something into a class that I teach called Intro to the Arts, I just type that into a subject line of an email. I'll cover that in the next tutorial, and I don't have to I don't have to mess with it any longer. And one of the beautiful things of Evernote is you can send stuff to it, and it can go in a specific folder, and you don't have to worry about it any further. So, okay, so here we have folders and subfolders, and these are just folders that I have set up for my own personal needs. I use Evernote for my job at the college. I use it for my personal life. And I use it for my part-time ministry at a local church. So it's very handy, and I kind of dump all the stuff in here, and it's a great tool. Okay, let me show you a few of these. Um, here's just how I have set these up. Uh, books is just books that I want to check out, some ideas of books I want to maybe read later. Uh, general is where I just dump stuff that I don't know where else it goes. Guitar lessons. I have a folder for each, I'm sorry, I have a note for each uh, guitar student outside my college responsibilities. Imports, this is a folder that is my default folder. So whenever I scan something into Evernote, and I'll talk about that in the next uh, tutorial, how to scan things into Evernote and get stuff in there. When I scan things in here, this is my default folder, and you can make any folder your default. But I have set, set up this, my imports folder, as just where everything goes before it finds a permanent home. Now, not everything goes in here first. Sometimes I can, I will send it to a direct subfolder or a different folder. But when I'm scanning items in or things like that, then I will, they'll just go in here as kind of a holding place until I can label those notes and until I can tag them properly. Um, got some other things here under personal. I have subfolders here. I've already mentioned that. Same thing with seminary. I am going through all my seminary courses and my college course notes and digitizing those so they're no longer on paper, which is actually really good because then I can search them very easily and they're just handier to work with as a digital file. SLCC, which stands for St. Louis Christian College, of course. I have folders set up here according to just things that I do at the school and things that relate to my job responsibilities. And uh, that's pretty self-explanatory there. Then um, I have a folder here called SLCC Student Notebooks. And this notebook is set up so that students can access uh, these notebooks. For instance, this little blue icon here indicates that it's a shared folder. And the way that you share a folder is you right-click it, 
you click uh, properties and then you click make this my default notebook. No, I'm sorry, I'm hold on, I'm completely doing the wrong thing. You right click it, hit share notebook, and you can share it a couple of different ways. You can click this, start sharing with the world, and it creates a unique URL for that notebook, which you can then share with anybody and they can see whatever's in that folder. But also you can invite individual people through email to view that notebook and it, they can view it as a web page. This is what I've done this semester with a couple classes so that my students can view everything, students in this class can view everything that's in this folder, like a syllabus or like this is a sample informative speech that I gave in class. Um, this is a syllabus, et cetera, et cetera. So. And then I have a file here called Topics where I just dump anything that I may reference in the future regarded that I might use for teaching or preaching or communication or uh, any, anything that relates to creating content. And I dump this all in one huge folder here because it's very easily searchable and you don't need to create subfolders for that. So then I have a couple other things here, worship and writing. So those are the notebooks and how I set that up and some Evernote basics. Um, one quick thing before I end this tutorial here is over here you can sort notes. Uh, let me go to all notes. You can sort notes by all kinds of different aspects here. And then you can view all the notes from, uh, let's say, this notebook or whatever notebook. It's the same as clicking on a notebook over here. But you can also view how you look at the notes here by going to view. You can go to uh, Sorry, I'm sorry, you, you can view them as a list, which is handy, or you can view them as a snippet. It's a little snippet of it. I personally prefer a thumbnail view because uh, it's more visual, and to me, I can find notes quicker because I know what they look like. So, anyway, that is um, those are some Evernote basics. And in the next tutorial, we'll talk about how to get your stuff 